Hello and good morning, everybody. My name is Dean Quick. I'm the board certified music therapist with Levine Cancer Institute, and this is Music Therapy for Self Care, where weekdays at 10 a.m., I come live to you and bring you some sort of musical experience. So, on Mondays and Fridays is live looping. I create instrumental music in the moment, typically improvised uh, for you to use however you'd like. And on Tuesdays, Starting today, for the next three weeks, it's going to be my three-part series on rap. What is rap, right? So this is kind of piggybacking on the series that I did, uh, What is Metal? Um, so that that went really great, so I decided to do another uh, three-part series on another kind of intimidating genre, just because of how vast it is, and I questioned even doing three parts, but, you know, I, I, my idea is that I can just kind of edge people into the genre so they can explore more on their own. I'm not really trying to encapsulate the entire genre itself. I just want to give you a taste and get you started so you can go out and uh, do some more work yourself on what is the genre. Um, Thursdays, I typically play uh, live music and sing and uh, engage anybody who's watching live and talking about the music. And then on Wednesdays, I provide a uh, more traditional music therapy experience, though it is not clinical music therapy because I can't see you. Uh, even though you can see me and you can participate in what's going on, uh, it's really important in music therapy as a clinical profession that the interaction uh, with the person individually happens so that I can adjust what I'm doing to best meet your needs. So um, all that being said, welcome. So this is part one on what is rap. And I got to be honest, um, I, I, I've kind of been touch and go since my adolescent years with rap because I got so into metal. Uh, in my adolescent years, and those are kind of the formative years for the music you listen to. Uh, though, uh, from an assessment standpoint in music therapy, if I'm working with someone who's older than me and they can't communicate to me uh, the music they like, then I typically look at the music they listen to in their 30s, which I'm in my 30s, and I listen to as much rap as I do metal or anything else. Um, so... Uh, let me just break down the three parts for you first. Here's how I want to um, go about this. So today, I want to set the definition. So what is rap? What is hip-hop? You know, um, is there a difference? And you'll you'll find out there, there kind of is. And then at one point, there kind of wasn't. <laughs> so we'll talk about that today. So the origins of rap and um, what hip-hop is as a culture. And uh, we'll we'll define those and get some musical examples of something called proto rap, which is amazing. Um, and then in part two, <clears throat> I want to talk about the golden age of rap, which is like '80s and '90s rap, where where it really kind of skyrocketed uh, into popularity and started charting in Billboard and all these other great things. And then part three, I've written down cultural considerations. Uh, so I want to kind of look at rap and, like as a genre and how it's, it's always kind of been this voice of a revolution. So I, I want to take all of those things into consideration and talk about rap as a genre and, and how it's influenced uh, culture. Um, because it's done that more than metal has. You know, when I was uh, talking about metal, it's really about how, you know, offensive or not offensive the content is for people, and it's an outlet. And and rap kind of has those same elements, right? Like, some of it is kind of offensive. However, it's not offensive for the sake of shock. You know, there is shock rap. Like, there's shock rock. Uh, however... Um, with with uh, rap, there's there tends to be more of a focus on revolution and moving forward, and I, I'd like to spend a lot of time talking about that, especially considering um, all the all the protests that are happening. Uh, I think we can really tie in some of the origins, especially in proto rap, 
with what's going on today. Um, so rap defined, that's today. What, what is rap? So it's essentially music with, well, originally just a driving beat. Um, and this is, this is rap kind of as we know it, right? So it's not, uh, it's speaking and it's kind of noted by a lack of melody in the vocals, though you'll find some melody. It's, it's more rhythmic and percussive, right? So that's one of the elements uh, for the vocal quality. So if we're considering um, the instrumental elements, we have um, a big difference in what we hear now in rap and what we heard uh, in its origins, right? So in uh, the 70s, well, really the, the early 80s, when, when the first rap, rap artists were signed, the instrumental elements were like straight 4-4 four, four rhythm, not swung, lots of bass, typically in a major key, and there the the vocals were in a rap form right so percussive not really melodic though there there are melodic elements but the focus isn't on the melody it's really on what the person's saying and um so we can i'm, I'm kind of going to jump around here because I, I have some musical examples i want to get to um but if if we look at kind of the, the, the origins of rap as we know it. We go back to a time in the in the 70s when this thing called proto-rap came along. Came along. Um, and really there's some recordings I'm going to share with you today that come before proto-rap that are in the 50s. Um, so you can kind of hear it. But really even going further back is uh, the African griots. So there's a tradition in West Africa in which um there it's it's a it's a way of storytelling is is my understanding is that the griots were were troubadours of sorts where they would spread stories through music um so let's see i have a musical example of griot music here and i love how you can hear blues influence in this music too so keep your ears open for that. Um, so you can hear how this music influenced um, uh, later blues music. So those vocal lines are, sound really bluesy, right? So listening to the instrumental elements, driving straight rhythm, nothing swung. So even that kind of translates into what becomes rap in the 80s. Or I should say hip-hop, because originally it was hip-hop, not originally rap. So uh, that leads me to uh, rap versus hip-hop uh, versus R&B. So... We look at it like this. Um, so KRS One is this rapper from the '80s, kind of like one of the original, like you know, people to make rap big. Um, and he said that rap is something that is done, and hip hop is something that is lived, right? So if you look at hip hop as this this culture that includes rap, so it's like rap, DJing, beatboxing, and graffiti. Um, is is all a part of hip hop culture, right? And so rap is a component of that. Though you'll have someone like I, I found this quote when I was doing my research for this uh, from Flavor Flav that said that like and and I'm kind of laughing because it's you know it's it's so individual and that's one thing I love about it because music should be individual right not just our experience in enjoying music but the artist should be individual right so flavor flavor is saying you know hip hop like became rap you know and so he said that um you know hip hop 
left rap when rap became slower. And when he said it though, and this is kind of like in the in the you know as as the volcano of rap is like brewing, right? Like he said this before like we had this explosion of rap on the scene of music uh, before um, artists from the south and then the west coast came about. <clears throat> he said that. Um, and you know, those artists were some of the first to start sampling, uh, like funk. You know, you had DJs in New York and the Bronx, like so. Th- there's this, um, there's uh, uh, DJ Cool Herc. Um, so he would throw these parties in the '70s, like these back-to-school block parties, and he had two separate turntables lined up, and he would mix and loop. That way, and you can actually, I wrote down the address here, you can still go see kind of where this this was born, this DJing aspect of hip-hop culture, uh, which, you know, kind of leads into rap, too, is uh, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in, in the Bronx, New York. Um, I think that's awesome. Um, next time I'm in New York, I'd love to see that. Um, so, anyways, back to Flavor Flav, you know, he was talking about, you know, hip-hop, Originally in the 80s was this, you know, straight rhythm, major key, and it was like this really kind of fun. It was about creating a fun atmosphere. It was super dancey. You know, it's kind of sliding in on the the, uh, coattails of funk, like the elements of dance uh, with hip-hop, which is originally rap, right? And, um... So that kind of leads me into, you know, you got funk, you got hip hop. Then you also have <clears throat> R&B, right? So R&B and pop are similar like um because there's a lot of focus on record sales, right? And that really influenced um the surge in R&B and pop in the 2000s and 2010s. Right, so um, you have the golden age of rap, which is from the 80s through the 90s, and then kind of rap sales are starting to decline in the 90s, so these record companies start, um, you know, labeling some music that isn't R&B, it's really just pop, with a black artist singing pop, and they call it R&B. And, you know, it's... And, you know, hip-hop also as a genre is was kind of used economically um, to sell pop records as hip-hop and rap. Um, so it's, you know, just like in metal and rock and roll, um, genres are used to kind of influence record sales when they'd see a certain genre dropping. Um, and, you know, unfortunately... You know, when it comes to music or anything else creative, um, if the artist is getting paid, the person behind the artist pushing it wants to get paid too. So they'll they'll make these, um, you know, adjustments to genre and classification of the music to drive record sales in a different way to kind of skew their charts. Is is my understanding. Um, so let's get into some of the. 80s hip hop, right? I want to start there. So we heard some Grey Up music. Um, so that was like the original storyteller rap music, right? Um, so the music uh, that really kind of started um, this hip hop scene in the 80s, original rap. So you have, um, so Grandmaster Flash. Uh, DJ, right? So he comes out with uh, this song. So this is 1982. This song's called The Message. So straight rhythm, not swung, but straight. Major key. So we'll, uh, let's see if I can get it. I want to get some vocals in there. 
to move out, I guess I got no choice. Rats in the front room, roaches in the back, junkies in the alley with the baseball. So there you go. I tried to get away, but I couldn't get far because a man very straight percussive. Don't push me because I'm, I'm close to the edge. You've heard that before, right? Yeah, there you go. So, you know, it's super, super fun. Uh, that's, you know, when I think of most music in the 80s, probably super fun. <clears throat> Here's another one. Uh, Rapper's Delight, Sugar Hill Grain, The Sugar Hill Gang. So there's some controversy here. Um with what was the first rap song right hey daniel glad you're joining man um <clears throat> so the first rap song a lot of people say is this song rapper's delight right and it, it, it you know maybe it's because they use the name rapper in the title but there's another song so this song came out in 1980 i said it hit so you can hear the elements of funk in here especially with this with the bass that's a funk bass line one thing i love about this is it's vocals bass and someone clapping and a bass drum now we've added guitar in Okay, so that came out in 1980. A lot of people say that was the first rap song. This is where rap kind of started changing. Uh, Hip hop started changing into rap. But the first rapper um, that was actually signed to Mercury Records was in 1979. And his name was Curtis Blow. Um, though different than what I'm about to play, I wanted to let you know, like 1979 had rapper uh, the first rapper signed, which was a year before Rapper's Delight came out. So this is um this is the song that contests Rapper's Delight as the first rap song that I've found. So this is King Tim the Third, personality jock by the Fatback Band. Alright, y'all. Here we go. Hey, listen to that bass. Come on. I'm the K-I-N-G, the G-I-M, King Jim the third, and I am him, just me, fat back, and the crew, we're doing it all, just for you, we're strong as an ox and tall as a tree, we can rock it. So you can hear there's a lot of similar elements between this song and Rapper's Delight, and the message, and all, you know, the 80s rap has its own signature sound. so cool okay so um there's a artist that i haven't started talking about yet and it kind of for me it kind of blends the conversation between you know this early hip-hop in the 80s and kind of carrying over some of the ideas from the 70s uh from proto rap right because proto rap is um so it's 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 got like a blend of like jazz elements and spoken word. Uh, a lot of it, I've done a lot of listening to it over the past um, like couple weeks. Is it is it really just it, it's it's very driven by revolution, right? So I, I lo- well, I say that, but then you have you know songs like ego tripping, you know, and it's not. Like really super revolutionary, but there there tends to be elements of like black culture and what um, people were going through, you know, in civil rights movements um, across the decades, right? You know, this what's going on now is not a new conversation, and you can trace it back in the music. Um, so proto rap kind of has this element of revolution to it, um, but I wanted to talk about Africa Bombada. Um, and the uh, birth of the Zulu nation. So he, um, in the late seventies, even though like his, his music started then, you know, I, I don't think his records really took off until the eighties. Um, uh, African Babata, well, late seventies. Um, I'm looking at my notes here. 
Um, so he started something uh, that was the Universal Zulu Nation. And the whole idea is that he wanted to create this group of hip hop culture artists, right? So going back to uh, breakdancing, DJing, rap, and graffiti, he wanted to have a place where all of these um, artists from hip hop could come together and um, bring about social awareness and political awareness. And a lot of the music was socially and politically driven which is, you know, still true to a lot of rap today. Some of it's more obvious than than others, right? So some some of the music uh, now is like heavily metaphoric, right? And unless you're immersed in that culture, you might miss the reference. Um, uh, but Zulu Nation was not that. It was truly um, very forward in, in the message. Um, so it was, they wanted to... You know, the idea was that you would engage the youth in this culture and it would be like this authentic representation of, of what hip hop culture is, right? And so the official birthday of the Zulu Nation was, and it was the first hip hop organization, it was November 12th, 1977. Um, I want to look here. So, yeah, Africa Bombada. You know, his music came around and he started cutting records in the 80s. But, um, you know, he was he was writing music before then. Um, let's see. And and looks like hosting um, black parties. He was DJing. Um, so let's hear. He has a song here. Um, one of his first big hits which is called Planet Rock. Um, might sound familiar to you. So this is the original 12-inch uh, version. So it, this is mid-80s. Everything up until this point has been early 80s. So there's more synth than there was in the early 80s. So the biggest difference is, I mean, it's straight in rhythm, major key. The, the vocals aren't as percussive. And you think, you know, coming from a you know, kind of like this new wave of like DJ, right? In the 80s, you're going to hear more electronic sounds, right? It's called sampling became more of a thing. So that's, um, you know, those those four uh, songs that I've, that I've gone through. So The Message by uh, Grandmaster Flash. Uh, Rapper's Delight by the Sugar Hill Gang, uh, King Tim the Third by the Fatback Band, and Planet Rock by Africa Bombada are kind of a. I feel like it's a a good representation of early hip hop. Um, you know, it, you have you have all the elements there of, of like what is rap defined, right? And um, I, I I really want to talk about um, proto rap now. Um, because I think it's so important. You have artists like Gil Scott Heron in this mix, which I'm going to touch on Gil Scott Heron now for Proto Rap. Uh, I really want to talk about him and other artists like him uh, in part three under cultural considerations um, because they had, a, they had a lot to say. And there's, there's artists, uh, new artists I want to talk about in part three too, like Talib Kweli, and most deaf, um, and Kendrick Lamar, who um, kind of have these proto rap elements. So it's not proto rap. Um, the the elements of revolution are there, and kind of at the forefront of what they're doing as musicians. Um, uh, let's see. I'm just gonna go over my notes here. I don't have. Um, Oh, so one of the other uh, musical elements of rap is 
um, well, the the three so you, the three big elements you want to look at in rap are content, flow, and delivery, right? So the content of the music, the flow is a person's kind of cadence, and then delivery is you know kind of wrapped into that too. All right, so proto rap. I want to give you some examples of what proto rap sounds like, and this might be. Um, Let's see. So the revolution will not be televised. Gil Scott here in 1971, right? So when did I say, um, so Grandmaster Flash, um, Sugar Hill Gang, Africa Mabata, this is early 80s, right? We're, we're hip, it's like the, the birth of like what hip hop is, early 80s. So looking at proto-rap, Gil Scott here in 1971. And we get earlier than that, too, in these examples that I have for you. So the revolution will not be televised. Um, so definitely sounds different, right? So as flute. Um, you will not be able to stay home, brother. I, I love Gil Scott Heron. There's, in, he gets me so out. pumped. Um, he just there's just so much truth in what this man had to say. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox. So you can hear the 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 kind of beginnings of what hip hop become later becomes, like ten years later, right? So fast speaking, straight rhythm. Uh, this I don't think it's in a major key. Um, but you have that straight rhythm and the percussive vocals, right? The percussive vocals are really important here. Um, so going back, um, let's see. There's a group called The Last Poets. Um, so kind of classified as jazz, but um, not really because they're proto-rap. Let everybody ride. So uh, this is a proto-rap, remember, like culturally relevant spoken word jazz becoming rap later on. Okay, so y listening to this, you would think, oh, this is a rap song. Well, yeah, it is a rap song. It's a proto-rap song, but it's classified as jazz. Dressed up in disguise. Up walks the pig with his and it's classified as jazz because rap didn't exist when this came out. So this is a song about the courtroom, right? What did the courtroom mean to a black man in 1968? All right, so um, let's see, that was in 1968. Um, let's see, the revolution. Um, here's, um, no, I'm sorry. That was 1973, uh, the courtroom. Here's an example, uh, Ego Trippin by Nikki Giovanni, um, 1976. I was born in the Congo. I walked to the Fertile Crescent and built the Sphinx. I designed a pyramid so tough. That a star that only glows every 100 years falls into the center, giving divine, perfect light. I am bad. So this is kind of a poem, right? I got hot and sent an ice age to Europe to cool my Oh, it is a poem. My oldest daughter is Nefertiti. It's a, a call to power and equality through pride. And it's an anthem for black women. burned out the Sahara Desert. With a packet of goat's meat and a change of clothes, I crossed it in two hours. I am a gazelle, so swift, so swift, you can't catch me. For a birthday present when he was three. And I this is also, uh, class this is classified um, in some, in some um, parts of the internet as children's music. So it's, it's empowering the youth with, with this poem. Um, I love that. So... Give me a second. My audio is tripping out. Okay, there we go. Um, so, uh, no pun intended. Ego tripping. Tripping. Yeah, sorry. Still early. Um, so, um, 
That was 1976. Uh, here's one um, by a guy from actually from Durham, North Carolina. If you know anything about me, you know I'm streaming here from North Carolina. Um, Pig Meat Markham. And there's a song called Here Comes the Judge. 1968. Okay, so hip hop kind of born in the in the early mid 80s, really mid 80s. And then, you know, golden age of rap and hip hop is 80s and 90s, you know, late 80s and 90s. Here's 1968. Here comes the judge, Pig Meat Martin. Markham, sorry. So you think about other music that was around in 1968. And this is really different, right? This judge is hip, and that ain't all. He'll give you time if you're big or small. Fall in line with this code. So, percussive speaking, straight rhythm. And if you're listening to those drums, I mean, how many times have you heard that drum sound sampled? It's so good. So this is this is 1968, you know. The, so the birth of you know rappers' delight, like I said, the first rap song or King Tim the Third, 1979. This is ten years before that. So thinking about um, you know starting the African griot music. Uh, you know, being born out of, you know, storytelling. Yeah, Richard, I hear you, man. Um, the samples. Yeah. I, so there was a lot of sampling going on in the 80s with Grandmaster Flash, Sugar Hill Gang, um, you know, sampling earlier R&B music and blues um, and sometimes even gospel music, you know, being sampled and then turned into something completely new. Um, I was going to save sample, you know, I was going to save talking about sampling really in the golden age. Uh, but I'm glad you brought it up now, too, because there I haven't talked about that there with with the DJ and the turntables, you know, especially, you know, artists like DJ Cool Herc, you know, having two turntables and, you know, sampling from each one and kind of blending, you know, like the art of DJ and being born in the Bronx there um, in the 70s. Um, you know that is that was like early forms of sampling, right? So now we think of sampling as, um, you know, just taking a clip, right, an audio clip, and turning it into something else, um, which we do that digitally. You know, th- then it was a matter of finding the spot on the record and um, using it in the right timing, so it was a little more acrobatic, right? It was not just copy paste. Uh, however, I will say the uh, creative energy needed to sample and and take something completely different and turn it into something new and like sometimes hold on to the original intent of that music and then expand upon it or make it something completely different is so difficult and so creative uh, I mean the 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 credit is not given to people who sample. Ah, Fruity Loops. Yeah, Daniel. Uh, you know, Fruity Loops back uh, you know, in high school days, people, you know, were using Fruity Loops to make their own samples. You know, that was like, you know, this, you know, we were going into this digital age in the 90s, right? Um, but there were, you know, there were, um, there were samplers before then, like NPCs where you could, um, you know, sample, you um, clips and use them and patch them together and all that, um, which is different than DJing. Uh, DJing is a whole nother element, right? You know, we look at hip hop culture and DJing is its whole, you know, one of four parts, which there are many more than four parts to hip hop culture, but the, the four foundational elements, rap, DJing, breakdancing, and uh, graffiti. Um, so DJing, you probably do a three part series or more on DJing. 
Um, so yeah, that so that last thing we heard was 1968. So you hear the vocal percussive elements kind of coming through. Um, another thing, you know, just kind of going back to the African griot music and hearing the blues influence from that, you know, it's it's really something. So the the last musical example I'll give you comes from 1957, and there's probably earlier ones. Um, But this is Andre Williams' Bacon Fat. And it was a dance, the Bacon Fat, uh, that he came up with. So still classified as jazz because rap doesn't exist in 1957. But I want you to listen to the elements of it. It's so good. Listen to that piano. Piano is very faint in the back. You can hear it, though. So spoken word. So this is considered proto rap. It's not real melodic, just speaking. So comparing that to the front, you do the freaks back, I do the bump, and when the sucker MCs try to prove a point with Trent's trio, I win the serious joint. So thirty years later, almost. I sit down and write a brand new rhyme because they say that miracles. This is the evolution of the genre. So not not saying that. <clears throat> You know, Sugar Hill Gang was directly influenced by uh, Bacon Fat um, or Ego Trippin' or Here Comes a Judge or anything like that. But those those songs were there, and we heard them, and it's part of part of culture, right? It's a it's a part of. Hey, man, did you ever hear that song? You know, Bacon Fat. That that guy was rapping. That was rap. Um. So and yeah. The the one where was it? Let's see. Which one was I playing with the distinct drums? Richard's got me thinking about sampling now. Yeah, those drums. I mean, you'll you'll hear a lot of these drums, the, like drum sounds. Being used in, um, uh, particularly rap of the late '90s, um, early 2000s. You know, now like there's there's so much of a push for like lo-fi sounds. You know, kind of blended with like some big boom basses um, in there, melodic bass. Um, but and, and you'll hear, and this is aside from rap. Uh, you'll hear uh, electronic, or I should say, intelligent dance music, uh, IDM artists um, like Aphex Twin, um, uh, Venetian Snares, um, Square Pusher. You'll you'll hear these artists sampling this same music uh, for electronic um, um, for electronic music that's mostly instrumental, but totally built on samples usually totally built on samples all right so that's what i have for you today for the part one of what is rap or rap part one uh, of a three-part series um i love the engagement from everybody who joined today thank you um so just a rundown so today was kind of just explore some of the original hip-hop and rap sounds of the 80s and then earlier in proto-rap Next week, we're going to look at the golden age, so 80s and 90s rap, or leading into the 90s, and then kind of, you know, getting into a little bit of, like, rap as we know it today. And then part three, uh, we're going to talk, kind of blend everything from one and two, and then also talk about the cultural considerations of the genre and uh, the, the cultural importance of the genre. 
And uh, yeah, so thanks. I'll catch you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, we're going to do uh, more traditional music therapy um, instrumental as opposed to like the live looping that I do on Mondays and Fridays. Um, so on Wednesdays, we'll do something a, a little more clinical to address any um, anxiety or pain issues you might have going on. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow at 10 a.m. for that. Take care.